Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma bar habita fillah Imam al-Mujaddid Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab Rahimahullah ta'ala said I'lam rahimahullah Anna al-Nawaqid al-Islam Ashira al-Nawaqid Or Ashira al-Nawaqid he said, Rahmatullah alayhi, Rahmatul Wasiya. He said, I'lam rahimakullah. He said, No, and may Allah have mercy upon you. That the nullifiers of Islam are ten. The Imam began with this statement and began with a dua, a supplication for those people who were reading his treaties. Those people who he sent out this message or this risala uh, in an effort to dawa, in, in an effort to give dawa. And the scholars explain that this is a means for opening the hearts of those people who are receiving dawa. So for example, when the scholar or when the student of knowledge or when the imam or when the da'i illallah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, makes supplication for those people who are listening to him then this opens their heart to accept what is being said likewise this is from the aslub or the way of the Arabs that you find one of the ways in which they give advice and you'll find that this is still practiced this is a part of their customs in general uh, for example if you do a mistake in the masjid or if they think that you've done a mistake and they want to advise you then often you'll find someone maybe they'll grab your hand in a hopefully in a kind and gentle way if they're a person of hikmah and fiqh and they will grab your hand in a kind way and they'll make a supplication. May Allah have mercy upon you. Or they will say, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, bless you. Barakallah fiqh for whatever you did or you led the salat or something. But you made a mistake here. Or I, I'd like to advise you here. Or something like this. This is a way, this muqaddimah, this introduction, is a way to open the breast, to open the heart, to accept the advice. And likewise, Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Hab, he began his treaties, as with many of his treaties. Look at Asul Thalatha. He says, I'lam rahimakullah, annuhu yajibu alayna ta'allam arba masail. He says, I'lam, no, and may Allah have mercy upon you. It is an, uh, an obligation for us to know four things. Again, he began his treaties, with this dua and we'd like to begin with saying may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon you and the Muslims in general and may Allah bless us all with benefit from this treaties I mean ya Rabbil Alameen then he said and the waqid al-Islam ashra al-Nawaqid he said that the nullifies of faith are ten and it's very important for us to know that in the books of fiqh, there are many, the scholars of fiqh in jurisprudence before Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab and after Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, uh, mention that there are many things what nullifies a person's Islam. There are many of those major sins, those particular sins and actions and statements and uh, beliefs that take a person out of the fold of Islam. However, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab mentioned ten because those were the ten most uh, famous or most widespread in his time. And also the scholars mention that they were uh, not only just widespread and well known, but that they were also, or that he considered them the most important nullifiers of faith that people commonly fell into so uh, and another benefit of this is also by making it Asherah Nawakid or 10 it makes it easy for memorizing 
that these things are so serious but likewise it is easy to memorize and when you look at many of his treaties that you'll find usulu thalatha okay why for one those are the three uh, fo foundation questions that you'll be asked in the grave men rabbuk madinak men nabiyak you know who is your lord who is your prophet what is your religion that's three questions. So for one, that's what comes in a nus. That what comes from the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Number two, also, this is easy to memorize if you have three, uh, three foundations to memorize. So it made it easy. He also mentioned Arba Masail. In the beginning of that treatise, he mentioned the Arba Masail, meaning the four issues. Also for what? For the easy, for suhul al to make it easy to memorize. And likewise, we find in this treatise, Nawaqid al Islam al Ashr, al Ashr, that these are the 10 nullifiers of faith. Because if you mentioned the 20, the 20 most famous, that would make it much more complex and much more difficult for us to memorize and to commit these uh, to memorization and for uh, for comprehension, then he said, "Al awl shirk fi ibadatillahi taala." He said the first is shirk or associating a partner with a law uh, in in worship with a law of the Almighty. He also said, and then he gave dalil. So he mentioned this first nakhid. The first nakhid is what is shirk, shirk in ibadah. Shirk in uluhiyah, or shirk that violates Tawheed al ibadah or Tawheed al uluhiyah. This is the shirk, the association of uh, partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in worship. And then he began, he gave the dalil, he gave evidence for this. He said, Qala ta'ala, Inna allaha la yaghfiru an yushraka bi, wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalik li man yasha. وَمَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَكَدْ إِفْتَرَى إِثْمًا عَظِيمًا He mentioned the ayah in Surah Al-Nisa and this is verse uh, 48 where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ Verily Allah does not forgive that you associate partners with Him but He forgives other than that for whomsoever He pleases. Uh, and whoever commits shirk, you know, associating a partner with the law, uh, then they have told a wicked, you know, a major lie. This is a major lie because the law doesn't need any partners. Ithman aliman, and a major, a major sin. So whoever has done this, they have violated Tawheed which is the assass of our religion. Then he also mentioned another verse. وَقَالَ تَعَالَى إِنَّهُ مَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَكَرْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْجَنَّةِ وَمَعْوَاهُ النَّارِ وَمَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ مِنْ أَنصَارِ He mentioned also another verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where Allah tabarak wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ma'idah verse 72 where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, Verily, whoever commits shirk with Allah, then Allah has made, has made it prohibited for them paradise. And their abode is the fire. And for the valimin, there is no helpers. For those who commit this shirk, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in another ayat, uh, verily shirk innu li dhulmun azim. Or verily Allah, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that shirk is uh, the great oppression or the great sin, the great wickedness. Dhulm. And dhulm, sometimes we translate it and sometimes it describes oppression. So this type of oppression is that you have oppressed by subverting 
the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is an oppression. It's not, you can't oppress Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but as a terminology, you have subverted the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because oppression is what? When we refer to oppression, we are referring to taking someone's right. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's right is what? Is that he is worshipped uh, alone. And this, we know this from the hadith, the hadith of Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala an, that he says, Kuntu radif al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala himar. Faqal, Ya Mu'adh, atadri ma haqallahu ma haqallahu ala ibadi wa ma haqallahu ibadi ala Allah. Qala, kutu, kultu Allah wa rasulu wa alam. قَالَ حَقَّ اللَّهُ عَلِي بَادِي أَنْ يَعْبُدُوهُ وَلَا يُشْرِكُوا بِشَيْءٍ وَحَقَّ لِي بَادِي عَلَى اللَّهُ لَا يُعَذِّمَ مَنْ لَا يُشْرِكُوا بِشَيْءٍ Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiya Allah ta'ala an was riding on a a donkey with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Ya Mu'adh, do you know the right of Allah upon his servant and the right of the servant upon Allah? and he said Allah and his messenger know best he said the right of Allah upon his servant is that he worships him and him alone. So that's how we know the haq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is that the haq of Allah, the right of Allah upon us as servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the right of Allah over all of his creation is that we worship him and him alone. And to not commit shirk with him at all, not to associate any partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there we see that in this verse, Allah uh, in this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu we see that the, the Prophet mentions and affirms the haq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is tawheed, to worship him and him alone. And that this is the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what's negated in this very verse is shirk, is that you associate partners with him. Haq Allah ali so the right of Allah is that you worship Him and Him alone. That's Allah's right. And part of that right is that it negates shirk. Uh, uh, the right of Allah is that you worship Him and Him alone and you do not associate any partners with Him. So this is the negation of shirk. If bad to Tawheed with negation of shirk. It is the affirmation of Tawheed and it is the negation of shirk, of associating a partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's right. It becomes, it's very important that we discuss before we get into, and then the last part uh, uh, that Imam Muhammad ibn al-Dhuhab rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned with this this uh, uh, in this first naqad of Islam, this first nullifier of Islam, and he said, and from shirk is sacrificing an animal for other than Allah uh, to to other than Allah, like those who sacrifice to jinn in the graves, because in the time of Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab in the Arab Peninsula, and it still is prevalent now, is this action of people sacrificing for the jinn in some of the Muslim countries and really all over the world non-Muslim lands as well people sacrifice to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they sacrifice to witches and pagans they sacrifice to statues they sacrifice uh, to the jinn look at the Hindus they sacrifice to their many gods they in some temples they I recall watching a documentary many years ago where they 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 weren't sacrificing but this this is a type of sacrifice they offered they gave an offering to the rats because in this particular temple maybe their main god was a rat I don't know exactly what their concept was but they lived in harmony with the rats it was absolutely disgusting in which a man would come in there and they would feed the rats in like hundreds, perhaps thousands, because the way rats breed, I'm sure it was thousands. They just flooded the room and covered the man, and, and he was feeding them. And this was a type of worship of their rat god or rat gods. They were sacrificed. They protected and loved those rats and worshipped those rats. This is, a, this is shirk. 
In Islam, this is absolutely impermissible. And so some people, they sacrifice to the jinn. And some people, they sacrifice to the graves. This is shirk al-akbar, which takes you out of the fold of Islam. And we already talked about takfir, so we don't. there's no need to continue to go back into those issues. But we will, from time to time, highlight those important things. But let's get on to uh, some of the uh, statements of the ulama with regards to shirk and understanding shirk. Uh, shirk, as a sharia term, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentioned, قال Shaykh al-Islam, أصل الشرك أن تعدل أن تعدل بالله تعالى مخلوقاته في بعد ما يستحقه وحده. He mentioned that shirk, and I believe this is Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah, or he's referring to Sheikh uh, Sheikh Islam Muhammad ibn Duha. But I think more than like in istiqama is Sheikh. It's a statement of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. So, he says that the asl, the root or the foundation of shirk is that to make a, make it, uh, make it the same or similarity between Allah and his creation in some of what even if it's just in some of the things which only a law that is only a part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's right meaning ibadah in, in any act of ibadah and there's various types of ibadah of course we know from the types of ibadah there is ibadah those uh, ibadah uh, amaliyah those uh, outward acts of, of worship like praying and we know that if we make this act of uh, prayer to anyone besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even if it's the angel Jibreel even if it is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam even if it is Isa Jesus alayhi salatu wa salam that this is shirk al-akbar this removes a person from the fold of Islam so this is kufr this is something which is absolutely unacceptable in Islam that and it is a violation of what? Of Tawheed. And it's a violation of what? The haqq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we said haqq Allah al ibadi That the right of Allah upon his servant is what? And ya'budu is to worship him and him alone. وَقَدْ عَرَفَهُ Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Haq rahimahullah ta'ala بِقَوْلِهِ هُوَ أَنْ يَدْعُ مَا اللَّهِ غَيْرُهُ أو يقصره بغير ذلك من عنوان عبادة التي أمر الله بها. He said, Sheikh Islam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab رحمه الله تعالى, who is the author of this treatise نواقد الإسلام, he said he defined shirk in one of his treaties. He said, and it is to supplicate to other with Allah other than Him. Or to intend any act of worship to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah has commanded with. Meaning any act of worship that Allah has commanded to associate a partner with Allah or worship other than Allah is shirk. So there's two points there. And, and in an authentic hadith, the Prophet والسلام, said, that and this is a hadith of Qudsi that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that whoever ashrak uh, ma'i ghayri whoever associates a partner with me or other than me so letting us know that shirk it could be that you worship someone else or something else besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or you, uh, you worship someone else or something else with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it, it could be that you are sharing, and this is where it comes, sharika. Sharika in Arabic, it means to associate, or for example, you could say, a sh I want to, uh, I have a sharika in a sharikat, means I have a partner in business. So that means you're associate, you, you have an associate in business. This is where that term comes from. So having a sharik, 
in ibadah to associate that with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is absolutely batil. Allah has no sh la sharika lahu. La ilaha illa ant subhanaka inni uh, inni kuntu min al-dhalimeen. La ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah. There is no God worth, worthy of worship except Allah. And he has no uh, partners. He has no partners. No one, no sharik. He has no partners. So, letting us know that a part of shirk, or part of the definition of shirk, is to worship uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala someone, or to worship someone besides Allah, or something besides Allah, no matter what it is. And this has to do with ibadah. And as the Prophet ﷺ said in authentic hadith, a dua huwa ibadah. And this is in Sunan Tirmidhi. A dua huwa ibadah. Supplication is worship. And this is where we have a difference between Ahl Tawheed and Ahl Sunnah and the definition of ibadah. Because the Prophet ﷺ, we, we take this authentic hadith and we say that dua, yes, when you supplicate to someone else, this is an act of ibadah. But some of the extreme Sufis, they say no. They totally define ibadah as something else. So this is why they don't believe they're making shirk. They believe, in fact, they're coming closer to Allah and that they're giving a status to their dead sheikhs and their dead uh, and the salihin. That's why they go to their graves and they say they pray to Abdul Qadir al-Jailani. They pray to someone, but they say, no, this is not ibadah. They don't d even define it as ibadah. But we define it as ibadah because the Prophet ﷺ said it was ibadah. He said a dua huwa ibadah. Supplication, it is ibadah. So that means if you associate or share in that dua with anyone, you make dua to anyone else or anything else besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that this is shirk. This negates your tawheed. This is the major shirk. And this is what is... Uh, uh, you know, a violation of ibadah. And ibadah has many different types of ibadah. Ibadah to muhabba. You know, your ibadah, your worship of, of love. The, having the love to the extent of worship. Adoring someone or something to that extreme. That only is to Allah. That's not even to the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam. That's not even to the angel Jibreel, alayhi salatu wasalam. That's not to uh, Jesus, alayhi salatu wasalam. Wala Adam, alayhi salatu wasalam. But instead... This is only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or the various other types of worship, whether it's tawakkal, tawassal, uh, all, all of these are acts of ibadah, or supplication as we mentioned, or dhuh, or uh, sacrificing. These are all acts of, uh, considered acts of ibadah in worship in Islam. And that's why when you do that to other than Allah, this is violating the haq, the right of Allah as we mentioned. ويمكن أن يعرف بأنه مساواة غير الله بالله فيما هو من خصائص 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 الله. So also you could also define this uh, define shirk as that which is uh, making the same basically ibadah to other than Allah as we mentioned to what is restricted only to Allah. And that's ibadah. Ibadah only goes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So since it's, it's only to Allah, and now you have violated Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's right. Qala Imam al-Sa'di rahimahullah ta'ala. Haqiqat shirk billah and ya'bud al-makhluka kama ya'bud Allah. O yu'adhim kama yu'adhim Allah. O yusrifu luhu nur. Min o uluhiya. He said, Imam Sa'di, Rahimallah Ta'ala, he said the reality of shirk with Allah or associating a partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to worship the creation similar uh, as you similar to the way you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or to make ta'veen, to uh, exalt similar to the way that you exalt to Allah. You know, you may praise someone, but you cannot praise someone and exalt them to the extent that you are exalting them to the level of ibadah. Because that's to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's a violation of his right. 
or to yusrifu lahu nur min khasaisillah min khasais al-rububiyyati wal uluhiyya or to uh, to direct a type of uh, of something which is specifically related to rububiya or the lordship of Allah or the ibadah or worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meaning that to turn your worship direct your worship which is only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any form whatsoever is that this means this is shirk this is a violation of Tawheed and the evidence for this from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Tallahi in kunna lafi dalalim mubeen idh nasawikum bi rabbil alameen and it's a statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in which it is by Allah that if we were to uh, that verily we are are on great misguidance or clear misguidance if we associate or make a make a, a, a similarity with the Rabbil Alameen with the Lord of the Worlds because Allah has no no partners there's nothing like him and uh, all the verses in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala negates that there's anything uh, anything uh, similar to him or anything that resembles him there's nothing that resembles Allah nor has the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala some of the benefits we gain from this is it shows us uh, and, and that Shaykh Muhammad ibn al Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala uh, emphasizes in like a Sulu Thalatha and throughout this book but especially in books like a Sulu Thalatha and all of his texts that the A'zam, he even says this in a Sulu Thalatha, he says A'zam ma amarullahu bihiya tawhi wa A'zam ma naha anhu a shirk that the greatest thing that that the greatest thing that Allah has commanded us with is Tawheed, is to worship Him and Him alone. And the greatest thing that He prohibited is shirk, or meaning the most severe thing that He has prohibited, the, the most severest prohibition is shirk, is associating a partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وقال ابن الثيمين معلقا على ذلك إمام ابن الثيمين said about this statement فذلك لأن أعظم حقوق هو حق الله فإذا فرط فيه الإنسان فقد فرط في أعظم حقوقي وهو توحيد الله إمام ابن الثيمين رحم الله تعالى said and the reason is, the reason for this, is that the greatest right is the right of Allah, the Almighty. And if someone goes beyond those bounds and goes beyond the bounds with regards to the this greatest right or the greatest right from amongst the rights, which is Tawheed, which is the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That when someone violates that, they have violated the Tawheed, the greatest right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. In the next lesson, we'll continue on in explaining this, uh, uh, the importance and some of the types of shirk in violating the haq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct is from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect is from myself and the Shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Nabi and Muhammad. 
وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم